by virtue of the powers vested in me as acting vice chancellor, I constitute this gathering a congregation of the University of South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we request you to join us in silent prayer or meditation to give thanks for the achievements being celebrated on this occasion. Thank you, you may be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Bahai to do melang. San Bonan Tobela Aushene. Aha. We are gathered here tonight to celebrate the achievements of 248 exceptionally talented individuals who will receive degrees and diplomas from the College of Economic and Management Sciences. I'm delighted to be here for this important occasion and glad that each one of you family, friends, UNISA academics, support staff, members of extended management, and especially our newest graduates, is here to join us. My name is Mamu Kheti Pagin, and I'm the Vice Principal for Research and Innovation here at UNISA. Tonight, I've been requested to stand in for the Vice Chancellor who's not able to be with us. Joining me on stage are members of the UNISA Council, Professor Pietras Portriter, and Professor Violent Clapper, who's also the Executive Dean of the College of Management Sciences. Also on stage are members of UNISA Management, Professor MC Marais, who's the Vice Principal for Academic Teaching and Learning. Professor MD Musimeche, who's at the University Registrar, Ms. Lungi Sangu, who's the Executive Director of ICT. We also have a representative of the College of Economic and Management Sciences, Professor Raphael Mpofu, who will also be participating in, in calling names of graduates from the college. There are also UNISA administrative staff members who have worked very hard to ensure that this wonderful occasion proceeds smoothly. Mr. Kuos van Fieren and the entire staff from the Graduations Division, Mr. Aubrey Lowe and Ms. Nomseven Zindlela from the Department of Corporate Communications and Marketing, staff members from UNISA Foundation and Alumni Affairs, and of course, our very own organist, Mr. Oki Fermiele. Thank you for being here. Among the students graduating tonight, there are two for whom this graduation ceremony also means a formal change of title. Mr. Werner Rousseau, who's getting a DCOM, will leave this ceremony tonight as Dr. Werner Rousseau. Congratulations, sir. Mrs. Miriam Walo Omolo, who will be getting a DLED at Phil, who will leave the ceremony as Dr. Walo Omolo. Congratulations, ma'am. <laughs> There's one good reason for members of our audience to be joyous on this occasion, and it is related to the accomplishments of tonight's graduates. Your son, your daughter, mother, father, wife, husband, grandson, granddaughter, or other relative or friend these graduates are important to you in your life, and you are justifiably proud of their achievements. What you may not realize, however, is how hard they had to work to get here tonight. By all standards, UNISA is the most demanding academic institution in South Africa. Unlike other South African universities, UNISA is an open distance learning institution, and so there are no daily face-to-face -face interactions with the lecturers as it happens in other universities. So more than being intellectually gifted, UNISA students also have to be independent thinkers who can take ownership for their studies. This is one of the many reasons why our qualifications are regarded highly. Our graduates represent the very best talent to be found in our region. And we at UNISA are very committed to our social justice mandate to provide higher education opportunities for a diverse range of students who would not otherwise have access to higher education. I'm sure, that, I'm sure that many of you are aware that this year we celebrate 140 years of our existence. And this is not just another 140 years of being around, but it's 140 years of shaping futures. Ladies and gentlemen, any university can offer degrees. Any university in the world can do that. But we at UNISA don't just offer degrees, we shape futures. We reach the poorest of the poor, those who may never have had access to higher education. 
Prisoners, domestic workers, gardeners, security guards, etc., the disadvantaged among the disadvantaged, we serve them all. We also serve the top executives and celebrities who have no time to sit in lectures. And those disabled students who do not want to be in the same class with people, some of whom may not accept them. This university is a special place and it produces special graduates. My warm congratulations to all of you who are graduating tonight. Before we begin with the awarding, degree, with awarding degrees and diplomas, let me remind you that graduation ceremonies are about celebration. And so we encourage you to express your pride by applauding and sharing as you do in your culture. And we are in Africa, so we know how to celebrate. So ululate, if you must, and say your praise poem with pride and confidence as you celebrate with your loved ones. Dance if you have to. I've been looking around to see if there's anyone from Limpopo with the traditional gear like the hele. I haven't seen them, but let me tell you something. People from Limpopo know how to celebrate. No. Don't disappoint me tonight. And let me tell you how the differences with the celebrations go. See, people, during celebrations in Africa, we make noise. Uh, but of course, if you don't understand, you think it's just noise. But in fact, it is not noise. Well, but let me explain. People from rural areas, particularly in Limbobo, they don't just make noise, they say something. So I'm going to invite you tonight, as people make the noises, listen. Sometimes, okay, most of the time, they say their praise poem. That's if they come from Limbobo. If they come from KwaZulu Natal, they say they are Izitagazel. For instance, if someone is a Bengu, you can shout, even if you don't know them, all right? Just like that, you know, is it from Kwazulu Natal? So the Kwazulu Natal people are more brief, so it will be just a shout of one name, which is is it The Limpopo people are more elaborate. They might even have a whistle to go with the celebration. Not a vuvuzela, just a whistle. But of course, some of us come from the townships, and so we've forgotten our praise poems, so we just make noise. Like, whoa! <laughs> like, nobody can hear what you're saying, but it's just noise. <laughs> All right, and if you come from, okay, I'm, got, I'm not gonna mention cities in prayer, but let's just come from Parker, Santin, or Houghton. Well, I didn't say new money, old money, real money. I just said Houghton, Santin. <laughs> Maybe you just look and you don't know what's going on. I'm going to invite you to enjoy, because that's how we celebrate in, South, in Africa. But as you celebrate, do so thoughtfully. Remember that everyone graduating tonight would also like to hear their praise poem. So as soon as the person you're ululating for has received the congratulatory handshake, please stop ululating so that we can all name, we can, we can call the name of the next person and they can also hear their praise poem. Let me also remind our graduates that because this is a celebration, we have organized cameras for you so that you can have something to remind you of this day. So as you walk the stage, please remember that the cameras are focusing on you. I encourage you to smile, okay, head up, shoulders square, back straight, <laughs> smile. Because the camera may be on you and you, you do want that picture to look good. It's your graduation day after all, so show a happy face. My final request to you is that please do not leave the hall before the ceremony ends. I've planned to keep it brief, so I can promise you we'll be done in an hour. I understand that you may have plans for tonight to celebrate with the rest of the family waiting back at home, but just imagine how it would be if everyone left as soon as they got their degree or their certificate. Then the last person will have no one to celebrate with or to share in their joy and celebration. So let us relax and enjoy this graduation ceremony until our colleague who's sitting right there, who will be the last one to walk the stage, walks the stage and we've celebrated with them. <coughs> Traditionally, we mark our graduation ceremonies with the Chancellor's address. And tonight we've requested Professor Valen Trapper, who is the Executive Dean of the College of Economic and Management Sciences, to deliver the Chancellor's address for us. I'm sure he will have some choice words of advice to offer our graduates tonight. I thank you all for attending tonight's ceremony and I thank you for your patience and your contribution to what I am sure is going to be a very special ceremony indeed. Let us give a warm welcome to Professor Clapper as he comes to address us.
Professor Potkitter, member of UNISA Council, um, Madam Acting Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor Pakeng, uh, Vice Principal Academic Teaching and Learning, Professor Murray, Registrar, Professor Mosimeche, uh, Executive uh, Director ICT, Ms. Lungi Santo, um, fellow colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, graduandi and diplomandi, welcome and good evening. Allow me to share with you a few thoughts on the word serendipity. The word serendipity was introduced into the English language by Horace Walpole in 1754, but it entered the linguistic mainstream only around 1958. Horace Walpole derives the word from a story or tale entitled The Three Princes of Serendip. In the story, three princes travel from Sri Lanka, having been sent by their father to learn about the world and about life. On their travels, they regularly discover by accident, things that they were not searching for, serendipities. Serendipity then describes the propensity to make pleasant discoveries by accident. Or to put it more colloquially, serendipity is like looking for a needle in a haystack and finding the farmer's daughter. Serendipity, however, does not simply refer to happy and pleasant accidents. Merely to stumble upon something of value is not serendipity in the scientific sense. Louis Pasteur said that chance favors the mind that is prepared. Hence, from a scientific point of view, only those who possess wisdom and knowledge can truly profit from luck. For example, when Archimedes settled himself into his bath and saw the water displaced by his body and concluded that the quantity of water was proportional to his volume, he had been pondering just how he might accurately measure the, the volume of an irregular solid, a crown. When he took the bath, his idea was not to solve the problem, as an immediate goal. But the solution that he accidentally arrived upon was evident to him since he was seeking for a solution all over the place. The unprepared mind would simply have taken a bath without thinking anything of it. I suspect that to some of you, receiving your degree might constitute a serendipity, since you did not quite expect to make it. What does serendipity mean for you and the world you face? At the University of South Africa, we espouse the vision of being the African University in the service of humanity. That is a powerful vision if you take it seriously. So we like to think of ourselves as existing primarily to serve people, to help them improve their lives and to inspire them to make a difference in the lives of others, to live lives of significance. Albert Schweitzer completed a doctorate in theology and later a doctorate in medicine and embarked upon missionary work in Gabon, West Central Africa. In 1952, he received the Nobel Peace Prize for his philosophy of reverence for life. In other words, for serving others. He was fond of saying, I do not know what you will be, but I know who among you will be the happiest. It is the ones who have found a way to serve others. Those who have found a way to serve others will also find that the greatest happiness is found in serving. Your serendipity is discovered while you are serving. 
Serving others can be challenging. People are often irregular and very strange. But those who use their skills, their qualifications, and their time to serve others will serendipitously find happiness. The first paragraph of the classical novel, A Tale of Two Cities, reads, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. Charles Dickens could very well have described our own day, our own time. You are called, Graduandi and Diplomani, to serve in these worst and best of times. I trust that at this, the African University in the Service of Humanity, we have even slightly contributed to your preparation in what Dickens might have described as this age of wisdom and this age of foolishness, this season of light and of darkness. I don't think that I really have to remind you of this season of darkness that all too often prevails in South Africa. This season when little babies are being raped by 41-year-olds, or tenderpreneurism, or corruption and abuse, or of self-serving. May I say something about serendipity and authority? You can all cite examples where someone, say an economist, for example, would say something like, if the petrol price goes up, food prices will increase. And you might have thought to yourself, I could have said that. What is so profound about what he had said? Well, what makes it profound is that that economist has studied and holds a qualification that gives him the right or the power to make obvious utterances. <laughs> you now have achieved a level of power in achieving your degree or diploma. What you require, however, is to transform that power into authority. Because power holds no serendipity. Power holds fear. Aung San Suu Kyi, the Burmese freedom fighter, says, when most of us hold power, we live in fear, fear of losing it. It is then that fear leads to bullying, to corruption, to oppression. Not so with authority. Authority bestows serendipities. Let me try and distinguish for purpose of relating it to serendipity. When a policeman stops me, I do exactly what he tells me to do. And I obey without asking too many questions. Why? Because he has power. It is called a gun. <laughs> when my mother tells me to do something, and my mother is 76 years old, I will be 54 on the 11th of June, in case you care to know. Uh, <laughs> when my mother tells me to do something, I do it. Not because she has power. I can easily take her in a boxing match. But because she has authority. She earned it through all of the selfless things she has done for me over 54 years. In addition, her concern for the lonely and the destitute for others her own age, and older, and younger, compels my respect. That is authority. And wherein lies the serendipity? She is constantly exhausted, but she is one of the happiest people I know. And she doesn't even know that she has all the authority that she masters. And the highest levels of happiness started when she retired from the corporate world and started serving others. 
May I cite again from the tale of two cities. You and I indeed live in a spring of hope and a winter of despair. It is in such a time that you are receiving your qualification. The world, your job, can become a great challenge. Often simply getting out of bed can be a daunting task. But the world, your world, is counting on you. Yours is the responsibility as alumnus of the African University in the service of humanity to live a life of significance as enabled by your qualification and your experience and your concern for others. There are many voices that will distract you, but I would like to suggest to you, listen to the mustn'ts, child. Listen to the don'ts. Listen to the shouldn'ts, the impossibles, the won'ts. Listen to the never haves, then listen close to me. Anything can happen, child. Anything can be. I should remind you of your moment of serendipity that you most probably have forgotten about. You started out as a discoverer and a victorious discoverer at that. You started out as a can-do individual. When others faltered and gave up, you carried on against all odds. You may ask, what are you talking about, valiant clapper? Let me remind you. Remember when you were just a sparkle in your daddy's eye? There were five million sperm cells, all frantically racing to fertilize a specific egg cell, and you won. <laughs> That's something. I beg of you, don't let having been born be your greatest serendipity. Your world counts on you. Thank you for your attention. Professor Tlapper, thank you very much for the, for the presentation. I said to Professor Tlapper last night that I look forward to tonight's graduation ceremony because he's speaking. And I'm sure tonight he understands, he will understand why he's on my list of people to clothe. Thank you very much for the, for the talk. But graduates, I've heard that actually during, during graduation, people who are graduating hear nothing of the graduation speech. They, many of them don't remember anything that the graduation speaker said. So let me help you, just in case you forget everything that he said. I'm gonna summarize it this way. That he said you got lucky. You got lucky just making it. Into this world, you got lucky. Now you're facing another luck tonight by graduating. But he says, of course, that you got this lucky because luck is when opportunity meets preparation. So it's not the kind of luck that happens to everyone. And so, so you got lucky because you were prepared. And an opportunity came and you grasped it. And here you are tonight. So if you forget everything else, remember that. But that's not all. I think the distinction that he went into about authority and power is important. Because you got lucky and you got this degree that gives you, that, that you can say gives you a bit of power, a bit of power to open certain doors that are probably close to other people who don't have the degrees. And the issue is, once that power to open doors is utilized, what do you do when you get in there? That's when you end the authority. And so it was a challenge. It was an encouragement, but it was a challenge, and I hope you, you will remember that many years from now, when you get your next degree, or when, or when you're sitting somewhere with your children telling them about this thing. Thank you very much, Professor Tapper. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in thanking Professor Tapper. For the next By virtue of the powers entrusted to me, I shall now proceed to confer degrees and diplomas of the university on candidates whose names appear in the program. And I request representatives of the College of Economic and Management Sciences to present the candidates to me. Madam, <coughs> pardon me, Madam Acting Vice Chancellor, I have the honor of, to introduce to you Werner Rousseau for the degree of Doctor 
of Commerce. I request his supervisor, Professor Jackie Young, to read the citation in support of the conferment of the degree. In his thesis entitled, Contesting the Efficient Market Hypothesis for the Chicago Board of Trade Corn Futures Contract, through the application of a derivative methodology, Werner so found that market participants are unable to exploit price movements in a way that contests the notion of efficient markets, a trading methodology that will ensure the exploitation of market movements and enhance trading decisions is proposed. As such, the study contested the hypothesis successfully and in terms of the methodology and the recommendations makes a significant contribution towards trading opportunities in corn which might deliver superior results. Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to request you to confer on Werner Grosseau the degree of Doctor of Commerce. I confer the degree of Doctor of Commerce on Werner Rousseau. Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to introduce to you Miriam Walo Omolo for the degree of Doctor of Literature and Philosophy. I request her supervisor, Professor Karl van Aert, to read the citation in support of the conferment of the degree. In a thesis entitled The Impact of Trade Policy Reforms on Households, a Welfare Analysis for Kenya, Miriam Walo Uyiro Umolo investigates the impact of trade liberalization on household poverty levels in Kenya by making use of a multi method approach encompassing a variety of econometric models using both time series and cross sectional data. Trade liberalization and poverty were found to have a stochastic relationship while investments and capital stock were found to significantly affect poverty determinants in the said stochastic model. Her research provides insights that will have a strong impact on existing economic theory as well as economic policy formulation worldwide. Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, I have the honor to request you to confer on Miriam Kualo Omolo the degree of Doctor of Literature and Philosophy. I confer the degree of Doctor of Literature and Philosophy mm -hmm. on Miriam Kualo Omolo. Mm -hmm. Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, Shireen Grace Koopman receives the degree of Master of Arts. <laughs> Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, The following candidates receive the degree of Honours Bachelor of Commerce. Lungile Zamantungwa 
Gumbi. Joel Ioannis Banda. <laughs> Tulile Fortunate Duayisa. Larita Kilder. <laughs> Tehofatso Desiree Kwadi. <laughs> Kempen Wilma. Kotze. <laughs> Aluvavi Alpen Maingo. <laughs> Nkateko Cecilia Makuba. Isaac Dabulamanzi Malaza. <laughs> Makwebe Sipo Mapakela. Constance Emmy Menard. <clears throat> Raiseche Tears Monama. Boitumelo Shalom Moropane. <laughs> Claudia Lebohang Moyo. <laughs> Lutino Umpongwana. Minal Chitandra Nagin. <laughs> Veli Becky Ngomane. <laughs> Prosper Nyakujga. Renette Padiachi. Yeah. Elrinda Joannette Peterson. Yeah. Arisha Ramnarian. Taveshni Sakaravidi (laughs) 
Leseja Phineas Sebake. Golani Sidney Sikoli. Also be Yannette Stein. <laughs> Ellen Nkateko Vuma. Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Honours Bachelor of Accounting Science. Carla Balanco. <laughs> Yusani Anna-Marie Kutsia. Eben Daniel Cronier. Janine Jeffrey. Nashintri Gondon. <laughs> Melissa Govender. <laughs> Magdalene Kahari. Nadira Kaki. <laughs> Tabang Mashlangu. <laughs> Molebo Heng. Masitenyane. <laughs> Kenosi Yvonne Moutlatse. <laughs> Selo Lodwig Ramosi Budi. Madam Acting Vice-Chancellor, the following candidates receive the degree of Baccalaureus Technologiae. Rosie Patricia Abrahams. <laughs> Audrey Samantha Africa. Elizabeth Ikekleng Banda. <laughs> Ramatabate Cynthia Maweni Bebekwek. 
Kaczynski. Lebo Hong Perseverance Boya. Maselepe Salome Choma. Talita Kutzer. Iris Sophia Collins. Andrea Melanie Dumba. Elizabeth De Beer. <clears throat> Modiechi Georgina Kolebohang Diale. Joseph Mariba Dijale. <laughs> Madam Acting Vice Chancellor Yvonne Marina Govea obtains the degree with distinction. Emily Afandi in Dumwa. Asande Lincoln Kaba. Madam Acting Vice Chancellor, Pritesh Kari Sudan Kalidas obtains the degree with distinction. <laughs> Christopher Lubumbe Kapoma. Kapoma. Madam Acting Vice Chancellor Jamil Karim obtains the degree with distinction. <laughs> Madumecha Dennis Homo. Lesejo Cotejo. <clears throat> Zanele Pretty Purity Kumalo. <clears throat> Pumzile Pamela Kulo. David Johannes Mons. <clears throat> Mr. 
na kisani mafea. Nkumiseni Elsie Mahaba. Alina Adelina Mahane. Futi Patrick Manyele. Beauty Sipiwe Mashlangu. Matankiso Salamina Mashlangu. Nomfundo Gift Mashlangu. Mohwashi Wilton Maslatsi <laughs> Peliswa Majodina Kwame Sydney Agreement Maku <laughs> Boy to Melo Makotlo. Mashain Johannes Hans Makubedu. <laughs> Umpo Cynthia Malebana. Felicia Makulwanyane Maleka. <laughs> Agnes Cobella Mamabolo. <laughs> Bawang Winter. Manamela <laughs> Nerusha Nerusha Mandri. Flekani Ana Mangani (laughs) 
Gertrude Mapeto. Rarang Sarah 